I started writing actually uh, very young. I started writing when this thing happened to my eyes. I, when I was about uh, 16 at school, I had this violent attack of keratitis, which uh, I had to leave school because I became pr practically blind and I had to learn braille and to continue my education with tutors. And during that time, I, I learned to use a typewriter. It was the only way I could write. And then I started um, to write. I actually wrote a whole novel at that period, which um, I never subsequently read. And uh, um, this has disappeared. I rather regret that it has disappeared, because I would be interested to know what it was like now. It was a sort of romantic... Uh, no, it wasn't very romantic. It was a sort of rather bitter novel about uh, a young man's relationship with the two different types of women, as I remember it. I discovered that I liked writing, that I had a certain gift for it. And um, I had, of course, before I went blind, uh, intended to become a doctor. I presume if I had gone on with that, I would have gone into medical research because I don't think I would have been a very good practicing doctor, but I might have been a fairly good uh, medical researcher. But why wouldn't you have been any good at medical practice? But, um, I would have been good enough in sort of personal relationships, uh, which I think are tremendously important with, uh, in a good, uh, good doctor. I mean, uh, I was diffident and shy and awkward then. I think I've slightly improved with age, but um, uh, I don't know that I would have been very good but um, I think I would always been very interested in the research part of the thing. But anyhow, I couldn't go on with that kind of scientific career because I couldn't use a microscope or do any of the necessary work in the laboratory. Uh, so that this determined uh, the, my choice of a career, that I had to go into something else. And then I discovered that I could write and that I did like writing. And from that time on, I, I always wrote a good deal. I wrote when I was an undergraduate. I wrote a lot of verse in those days. And then I also wrote a certain amount of prose. And um, I did publish my first prose book when I, when was it? I think about 1920, I think, the first uh, book of stories that I wrote. How did you come to publish? Did you already know publishers, or did you write to them? Well, I'd published a certain amount of, uh, of verse in periodicals. I'd published two uh, little volumes of verse with uh, Blackwell at Oxford, and uh, a certain amount had been published, as I say, in papers like The Nation and, uh, and in uh, art, art journals of different kinds. And I'd written a certain number of essays and stories which had been published, and I sent... Um, my first uh, book of stories, Two Chateau and Windus, where Frank Swinnerton read them and uh, set his seal of approval upon them, and I've been with Chateaus ever since. I've always enjoyed it. I've always... Uh, it's it's n it never come very easily. I mean, all my thoughts, in a sense, are second thoughts. I, I tend to write everything over again. But, uh, but I like it. It's laborious, but it's, it's work which, um, which I find very rewarding and extraordinarily interesting. I mean, this uh, seeking the, the right way of saying uh, something. And I must say, I was very interested not long ago in looking over an old volume of, um, of essays which I'd written while at Oxford for my tutor. Uh, on, I, I took the English literature at Oxford, and these were essays on all sorts of literary subjects, I mean, from Chaucer down to the present day. And I was interested and surprised to find that uh, I was writing quite well at that time. I mean, that I had a, a certain feeling for style and that there was a, even a certain elegance in um, what I was doing, even at the age of, of 20, that I, I had, obviously, some kind of natural gift for writing. Uh, and al although, as I say, it's always been uh, a considerable work for me, I mean, it's, it's this... Uh, I, I never get the results I want, except as a result of, uh, of careful correction and going over and rewriting. I don't work out anything in great detail. I mean, uh, I sort of start a thing and then it becomes clear that this has to be done and, 
I reach a point out in front and therefore this means something about that the back has to be changed and it develops in this way. I don't work out a thing in any elaboration in advance. Would you say that any one of your novels has been more real to you than another? I think in some ways the um, time must have a stop with the, the one I enjoyed most of all doing. In your early years, was your defect of eyesight a great handicap? Well, every handicap, of course, is a, is a challenge. I mean, one is limited, naturally, by in what one can do. I was strictly limited in all kinds of um, otherwise normal activities. I mean, many things that I liked doing, like mountain climbing and so on, became very difficult or impossible for me. I couldn't practice any kind of sport requiring hitting a ball because I couldn't see the balls. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the fact that there is this kind of challenge, if the handicap isn't too great, uh, the, the challenge can often stimulate one to do things which I think in, in other circumstances one wouldn't do. I mean, it's in a, in a sense a little bit like the, the problem of the sculptor, the, pro the sculptor wrestling with extremely hard and intransigent stone is forced to do things which the sculptor who works only in clay doesn't have to do. I mean, it's in a sense too easy. So that unless the handicap is too great and is overwhelming, it, it does act as a kind of stimulus and, and drives one on to do things. Um, I did read a great deal, and I'm extremely astonished at how much I was able to read, because at the beginning, for about two years after the this thing came upon me when I was 16. I couldn't read at all. As I say, I had to learn Braille, and I had to have tutors who read to me. And uh, then, little by little, I was able to read with it. But I did all my reading while I was at Oxford with a, a powerful magnifying glass, which I must say I'm amazed that I got through as much as I did. And it must have was obviously always rather tiring, this uh, whole process. But uh, I managed to do it, and uh, I suppose I've always had a, a passion uh, for knowledge and a certain gift for coordinating facts. I mean, th this is what interests me um, in writing, in, in expression, in thought, is the, the attempt to coordinate different fields, the attempt to say many things at the same time, the attempt to bring together into a single coherent and meaningful whole, a great many apparently disparate uh, events and, uh, and data. Um, this has uh, been the ideal of writing that I've always had, and I um, think I have a certain gift for it. But, and this is what interests me. And, and sometimes I, I go too far, I get carried away and try to put in too much, and I require then to go back and uh, simplify and cut things out. But uh, I've always, I mean, I, I really don't like the very bare, bald, classical style because it's, much, to my mind, hopelessly oversimplified and therefore not true. I mean, life in its uh, reality is incredibly complex and very, very subtle. And therefore, I would think that any form of art which is, is as simplified, say, as the French tragedy of the 17th century is intrinsically an inferior art. I mean, maybe very, very elegant and beautiful. But if you can do, it, impose order upon a much more complex uh, mass of material as Shakespeare was able to do, this seems to me intrinsically a superior form of art. And I would say this is true of any kind of art. I mean, isn't this the distinction in the uh, pictorial arts between what is technically known as fine art and uh, and the crafts. The crafts are extremely simple forms. I mean, the form of pottery is exceedingly simple, and it can be incredibly beautiful. But at the same time, is it as high a form of art as a great composition where enormous numbers of elements, both formal and uh, literary in the widest sense and emotional, are brought together and harmonized in a great composition. Uh, I would feel unquestionably that the, the great uh, composition which brings together and harmonizes many elements is 
intrinsically a higher form of art than the, the simple, elegant, so-called classical form. After all, life is immensely complex. Why pretend that it isn't? I mean, uh, and why not attempt with a sufficient background of, of knowledge and information to make some kind of synthesis, some kind of meaningful pattern of, of a large extent of information. Uh, I find this kind of, uh, of new criticism unspeakably boring. I mean, it seems to me so barren, and, and it's this hideous jargon they've invented. I don't know what it's all about. It just bores me absolutely stiff, this whole thing. Uh, it seems to me so trivial in many respects. So, although I, I think probably some of this work has to be done, this kind of very elaborate and meticulous uh, linguistic work is probably useful, uh, but to regard it as, uh, as the sort of be-all and end-all of criticism seems to me absolutely absurd.